what is happening y'all jay here and what a week it has been the trailer has surpassed all expectations and while my last video talked more about the lore and the gameplay mechanics in this video i want to explore all the different weapons armor and what is this new power and in this video we are going to answer all of that so let's get started now, while it's quite normal to have new weapons in a DLC, Miyazaki has gone one step further. He's adding a whole new class of weapons which will completely change the gameplay. So let's go through the different classes. First up is the shield and sword combo. Leave it to Miyazaki to come up with a weapon so unique, a weapon that combines both offense and defense. And since this is a new type of weapon, there will be other variations of the same weapon too, such as one focusing more on attack with a higher attack power and the other more on defense, prioritizing the shield. Another weapon class that this DLC will be introducing are these reverse grip curved swords and I'm guessing this move is some kind of an ash of war. Next up we have a weapon I don't think anyone has paid attention to. At first sight this looks like a dagger he's pulling out of his eye, but look closer this is a sword with branches like a tree. So either the sword is always shaped like this or this is a regular sword whose ash of war is to expand and do small AOE damage. Or what if when you break enemy poise and you do this, it expands on impact and does more damage than regular swords. One more weapon type that is getting a lot of love in this DLC are the twin blades. In this shot we are fighting a big baddie which we can clearly see from the boss wall. And that's quite a hot twin blade. And the second place we see one is quite close to end game when we are fighting Mesmer. Also, I do not think Mesmer is the final boss. No way has Miyazaki revealed the finale in just one trailer. Next up we have this one which looks like a fate strength sword just by the looks of it. Something on the lines of the blasphemous blade but instead of fire damage it does holy damage. Now the next weapon type that is coming is the one that we use to defeat Rikard, which strengthens my argument I made in my first video. I truly believe this is Rikard, since Mesmer is using the same weapon type we found in Rikard's arena. And the way you use this weapon is similar too. This looks like a falling star beast jaw and if I had to guess, this looks like some kind of a gravity attack. And even though we have seen a lot of gravity attack in Elden Ring, most of them involves throwing rocks at enemies. And I'm guessing this is something new. I mean if I could design this power, I wish I could pull and push enemies away. Like this guy. Almighty push! Almighty push! We also have the long ranged weapons. It is so good to see long ranged weapons finally getting some love in Elden Ring. But rather than using your kunai as a throwable, these kunai are your main weapon and you can equip them in both your hands and throw a barrage of them. Then we have this rapid fire crossbow. I counted 10 shots. This will be a lot of fun to use on mini bosses. All these different weapon classes are absolutely fascinating. And you know what else that's fascinating? The different armors and boy did we see many of them in just 3 minutes. Let me start with the second best armor in this trailer. I'm gonna leave the best for the last and in my opinion that armor is better than any armor of the base game. Anyways coming back to this, sure this looks like a heavy armor but looks godly. And you know who this reminds me of? The very first boss of Dark Souls 3, Udix Gunder. Next up we have two armors in the same scene. If we zoom in, this looks like another cool armor. And this armor we see again at the end of the trailer when we are fighting Mesmer. And in the very next shot we have this, which looks like a spellcaster armor and it's either an NPC or by looking at the state of the arena with broken benches, this could very well be a boss and this armor very much gives me Carrion Royal Family vibes. In one of the shots we end up in the poison swamps. And here again we have this new armor which looks like wings. And then we have this. This reminds me of the brain suckers in Bloodborne. <laughs> and 
and this shot gives us a good idea about the new armor very much like the royal knight armor we see in the base game there are so many cool armor in this trailer this is another one with the white long hair this is similar to the zemor armor in elden ring and it was one of my favorites because it looked so damn unique also look at the amount of detail in this armor also we have this shot where the trailer shows us a new type of throwable but also shows us a new armor and what i really found cool is the headgear notice his face is half covered like an assassin in this shot we have a look at another new armor set with some sort of a crest on its helm looking at what looks like a great rune and then we have the best armor that i have personally seen in any fromsoft game mesmer the impaler armor and i'm very sure we are getting this armor because the helmet of this armor is already on sale as a collectible that's not it also revealed in the trailer three new spells one being the sleep spell and if i had to guess this is the same spell Mikila will be using and yes i think she's going to be the final boss and not mesmer then we have this spell which the hippo gator thing is using and the steam image confirms we can learn this crucible spell too but that's not the only crucible spell we have seen so many aspect of the crucible spell in the base game but we could never cast wings this just shows this DLC is bringing the best things that we could not get in the base game. And could this mean we can now pick up fire pots scattered across the map to damage enemies? And finally, this beast roar. I wonder if this gives damage buff of some kind. Now, let's uncover the most intriguing aspect about this trailer. Note how FromSoft needed to mention in a separate line. Take on these threats with the new powers you can acquire. FromSoft has a very unique problem with Elden Ring, which they didn't have with their other games. Well, at least not to this extent, cause unlike other games, Elden Ring is an open world game. So there is so much to explore, so many secrets to find, as a result of which there are literally millions of very very high level players by now. So to counter that, Miyazaki has come up with a very clever solution and introduced a Sekiro style progression system as the man himself said in an interview you will best understand if you imagine something akin to attack power in Sekiro Shadow Die Twice he then further elaborates it's something like an attack power separate from the existing levels that is only effective within the DLC area if you haven't played Sekiro what he basically means is from Software's 2019 Shinobi action game didn't actually have a traditional leveling up system like any other RPG, but instead let the players periodically enhance their attack power and health whenever they either collected 4 special power beads or managed to beat a powerful story boss. He reiterates that players may run into a challenge and think this boss is too strong. So I'll explore some other area and challenge them again after I get stronger. Which basically means we are all going to start at the same base level and no amount of grinding in the base game will help you. And if you get stuck on some boss, you'll have to explore the DLC and find Elden Ring's version of the power beads or defeat some other boss or even mini bosses to increase your attack power and then come back and fight the boss you had a hard time with. So many fine details in just 3 minutes of trailer and I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. But this is just my thoughts on this trailer. Now I wanna know your thoughts so comment below and let me know. And for all things gaming a like and a follow would be simply lovely.